I am a function. Don't believe me? How about now? Okay, I'm not the whole function, I'm what's inside the function, which means if there was something outside of it, like a variable or something, I wouldn't be able to reach it. See, I'm trying. I'm what's called the body of the function, which means every time the function gets called, I do what needs to be done. Let's say this function was called salute, and what was inside of it is just a log, like console.log hello friend. So every time you call this function, I show up and I say, hello friend. Go ahead, try it, other me. Hey. Hello, friend. Cool. All right, see you later. See ya. All right, now remember that concept because we'll talk about it in a second. Hello, in this episode, I'm gonna show you what a pure function is, why it matters, the idea of side effects, and how you can make your existing functions pure. This is episode 16 of this 20 part series I'm calling 20 things JavaScript developers should know but probably don't, pure functions. Let's have some fun, yo. All right, so this will be a code-heavy episode. So we'll start with simple examples, but no matter how simple or complex, the principles are the same and the same rules apply. So now what makes a function pure? You might have heard this definition before, but there are only two rules. Number one, the function always returns the same output given an input. And number two, there are no side effects. These are the only two rules your function needs to follow to be pure. Now, if you don't understand what any of that means, it's not your fault. It's because as an industry, we've done a terrible job explaining what these rules actually mean. But hey, I'm gonna fix that for you today. So let's take another look. The function always returns the same output for a given input. So what does that mean? It means if I give my function x as an input, it will always give me Y as an output. It means no matter how many times I call it, no matter when I call it, no matter where I call it from, no matter what else is going on in my code, and no matter what else changes in my code, and no matter what else is going on in the world, if my input doesn't change, if it's still X, the output will always be Y. It will always stay the same assuming the input didn't change. If I give it X, it gives me Y. I could have 10 other things happening at the same time and around my function, but if the input is X, the output is Y. Say a function that doubles a number. I know it's a crazy simple example, but bear with me for a second. Let's say this function that takes a number and doubles it. No matter what else is going on, if I pass it a five as an input, it will always give me 10 as an output. So let's go back to the definition of rule number one. The function always returns the same output for a given input. Let's make a more interesting function, one from earlier. So I'm gonna go back here and clear all of this. We had function salute. And what was it saying? It was returning, uh, hello friend. Oh, hello friend. Hello friend, I'm gonna do string literal. There we go. So if I call this now, hello friend. Now this function always returns the same value. So it is technically pure. Uh, but it's not very useful, is it? And it's it's not specific. Which friend are we talking about? So it's a generic. It's also static, which means the value never changes. So again, it's not very useful. We don't like that. Let's make it more specific. Which friend? Hello, Shiv, Shivan, okay? Uh, it's no longer generic. It's specific to Shiv and it's still pure. But practically speaking, it's still pretty useless, right? Because it only works if you have a friend whose name is Shiv. So it's no longer generic, but it's still static. The value doesn't change. That's still not good. What if we had a variable called name? I'm gonna put this up here. Let name equals Shiv, Shivan. And then what if friend uh, was here? Oh, name, name was up here. There we go, hello Shiv. So now I can set name to anything else I want after that one time, name equals Kendall. And then if I call salute again, nice, it works with different names now. Let's do one more and I'm gonna copy pasta because I'm lazy. Who's the third guy? Uh, Roman, yeah, Roman. There you go. And I'll do one more just for fun. What was the dad's name? Logan. Hello, Logan. So that works, but there are issues here. Did you notice what the function has to do when we call it? It has to go outside itself. Let me use my crazy font. There we go. This name, the function has to reach outside itself 
and grab this name and pull it into this string literal statement and add it to the hello statement. Here, I'll show you again. Uh, we'll change this to Tom. And when we do Tom, I'm gonna demonstrate. So we, we call salute and salute runs. There's no inputs here. Uh, the name uh, variable gets uh, pulled into the statement just as before. So it doesn't matter how many times I run it. It's still the same. The name variable is not defined inside the function. So it has to go outside itself, which breaks the first rule of pure functions, which was the function always returns the same output given an input. Well, how does it break it? What was the function input? The function input is nothing, right? Uh, which is basically undefined because we're not passing anything, any arguments to it. So does it give us the same results every time? No, it doesn't. Once it gives us hello, Kendall, hello, Roman, hello, Logan, hello, Tom. So every single time is actually giving us a different result, which breaks the first rule. What's worse is if a name wasn't set at all. Let me get rid of all of these. Let me just do the, the, the very first one, right? What if name didn't exist at all, right? It just does, it doesn't work. It, it doesn't do what it's supposed to do. What if name was like that, right? Undefined, so name exists, but it's, it, so it actually breaks because of something that's outside of it. It's too dependent on an external variable. That's terrible. It relies on the outside environment and the stuff that's outside of it. Bad idea. Now, in order for the function to perform its job, there needs to be a variable called name. And that's not always guaranteed to exist. And it's definitely not guaranteed to have a meaningful value, in which case we are looking for a string. It could be a number. Uh, I mean, number is probably gonna work because it's gonna convert it to a string. But I mean, that's probably not the function expects. Uh, it could be an object. It'll be hello object object. It could be a function. What if it's a function? <laughs> hello function, right? So it's not, the function has no control over what happens as the end result because it's expecting something that's outside of it. But that's okay, we can fix this. We can pass in the name value and, and uh, we can we can probably kill this. We don't need that. I can pass in shiv as a variable to my function, and now all of a sudden it doesn't even uh, expect. Uh, it doesn't even look for the name. Let's name. Let's see, see now. Uh, it's not even looking for that because it has a local variable uh, called name. This way, honestly, we don't even need the uh, global variable. So. Uh, we can call this as many times as we want. Kendall, I won't do all of those bastards. I'll just do three of them, which is great. So now uh, to reiterate, name is a local variable. It's inside a function, no more dependencies, and it's part of the function body, which is great. This means our function now follows the first rule of pure functions, which is the function always returns the same output for a given input. Every time I pass it shiv, it will give me the same output. Hello shiv. Doesn't matter if I, uh, it's new morning, if it's afternoon, it's tomorrow, it's today, it's no matter what else happens around this code. If I have other variables that are outside this function, they change and uh, they get deleted, doesn't matter. As long as the input is shiv, the output's going to be Hello, Shiv. Now, why is this better? Aside from being cleaner code, arguably, this makes your function more predictable. Now, wasn't it predictable before? Well, not really. If we rely on an external value, that value could change by any other part of your code. It may not even be in the same file. And as you saw, all of a sudden, your salute function returns something totally different and more importantly, unexpected. And you're gonna have to chase it in code and see what happened and where the value changed. In order to find out what the function result would be, you would have to look in places other than the function itself. And that's the source of a lot of bugs. We spend a lot of our time debugging, chasing values and variables and see where they changed. We use breakpoints, we do global searches throughout a project. We do all sorts of crazy things just to find out why functions do something other than what we expect them to do. Now, most of those bugs can be fixed if your function simply relies on an input as opposed to things that are outside of it. So it becomes more predictable, it gives us consistent results, it's cleaner, arguably, and another benefit is that it's more portable. I can move this function from this file to another file, or even from one project to another project. And as long as I give it the input that it needs, 
it's gonna work. It doesn't care where it is. It, it's not relying on anything outside of itself. It will just work, it's independent. Which also means we can test it easier. Let's write a very basic rudimentary, almost offensively simple test for this. All right, so let result equals, I'm gonna call the function first salute, Tom, if result equals hello Tom, uh, return, no, we're just gonna console log this because we're doing a, we're not actually doing unit testing, we're just doing a really simple uh, demonstration. Uh, if I do hello Tom, success, no, pass. My test passed, and if I uh, fail, if I if it returns anything other than hello Tom, it fails. So I can test this function without having to stop anything or import anything. If you've done unit testing, you probably know what I'm talking about. All I have to do is call the function with some. Let's do Greg. <laughs> uh, even worse. All I have to do is call the function and pass it a parameter and have an expected result. And so my, the result of my function is extremely predictable and testable in this case. Now, what about testing the previous one where it didn't catch a name, right? Uh, I can't do that anymore because, I mean, sure, I can have uh, let name here equals, you know, something other than Greg, uh, Tom, right? It's going to fail because now this function relies on something on the outside. And during my test, I'm gonna to have to set this name to Craig, and that's not what we wanna do, right? Tests uh, don't wanna to be touching. If I'm testing this function, I don't wanna be touching a variable that's outside of it. So uh, I'm basically repeating this, the same point about the isolation of logic and the testability of this piece of code just becomes a lot easier if it doesn't have to rely on the outside world. If I uh, change it back to the version that we like, now it's gonna pass. All right, let's move on to rule number two. The function produces no side effects. Okay, well, what does this one mean? This means the function doesn't change anything, a variable or a state or some value or some reference to something that is outside of itself. For example, let's uh, get rid of all this. What is the example I wrote? Let sheep count equals zero. I don't know why sheep count, but Bear with me, ha, sheep with me. Add sheep, I have a function here called add sheep and I have a sheep count. Counting bodies like sheep. Do you know what song that is? A lot of you get these songs that I'm referencing, get them right, but I don't know if you know this one. Counting bodies like sheep. Uh, add sheep, what did I wanna do here? Sheep count plus plus, is that what I had in my notes? Yes, <laughs> you guys probably don't know this, but I have some notes here, can you tell? All right, so why is this bad? So what if add sheep changes sheep count that's outside of it? Why is it such a big deal, Cena? Well, let's see what happens when we call it three times. Add sheep, invoke. If I uh, call this three times and then do a console.log sheep count. All right, what is it? Three, cool, console log says three, which makes sense. Except in a real project, you're not gonna have all the instances of at sheep every time you invoke the function all next to each other. It's not gonna be uh, all in the same place like I have it here. They don't give a f about you like I do. Same song, go look it up. Your function calls are gonna be all over the place. If you have a real project, you're gonna be calling at sheep presumably from all sorts of different places, different functions different files and modules, might even be called from a user event. And for you to predict what sheep count is, you'll have to know that there is a place in your code, a function called at sheep that changes the value of sheep count. And then you're gonna have to go find all the instances of at sheep to know what value you should expect. So what's the better alternative? Let's rewrite our function. So instead of it changing sheep count, what it's gonna do, it's going to return, uh, it takes a count and it's gonna return count plus one. Okay, so these aren't gonna work anymore. I'm gonna pass in sheep count. So I can do this, right? One, 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 one. And I'm gonna do this at sheep. There we go. Okay, so a lot changed here, right? And, and so now the function takes a count which is 
we're passing sheep count, adds one to it and returns a new value. It's not changing sheep count anymore. It's it's just passing back an entirely different value. This lack of external influence makes pure functions less dangerous and ultimately to cause fewer bugs. But let's take a moment and think about why this is better code. I mean, it's more code, right? Wrong. No, actually, it is more code. It's a bunch more code, but it's better code because let's come out. I'm going to take a sip of water for suspense. Ah, oh, delicious. Water is good. Stay hydrated, kids. All right, let's come up with the list of why this code is better. One, now every time I call add sheep, I know exactly what I'm going to expect. I'll expect whatever I'm passing to it plus one. Two, for me to find out where and how sheep count is incremented, I don't need to know about this secondary function called add sheep. I'll just have to find places where sheep count is changed, which means our function could be in a library for all I care. I don't have to look in there to see when sheep count change. All I have to, again, look for is to look and see where sheep count itself has changed, not the secondary function. Three, it makes the flow of data in our code easier to follow and easier to understand. And four, no other side effects. The function doesn't actually change anything. It just returns the incremented value of whatever it was we passed to it, which in this case, we happen to use the function for sheep count, but it technically means we could use it for any other variable. So hopefully that makes sense as to why side effects are bad. Now, not every function needs to be pure. Impure functions aren't inherently bad. There are situations where it's okay, maybe even necessary to have impure functions. <laughs> That's right, they are necessary, and especially in some real world practical scenarios. For example, DOM manipulation. DOM manipulation is almost, <laughs> almost entirely a side effect, right? You're changing things that are absolutely not a part of your function. Random number generator, right? When you're generating a number, every time, presumably, the value that's returned is going to be different, even if you give it the same input. Date function is always going to be different because it's never the same moment in time. User input, like click events and, and things like that, because they rely on an external input, user's input. Similarly, file IO, because it involves interacting with the file system and reading and writing to an external system. And network requests, because the data itself is external. So yeah, these are all examples where impure functions are actually necessary for practical reasons. And pretty much every application has at least one of these. But what we can do in the meantime is it's usually beneficial to have them isolated and, and try to minimize their use. That doesn't mean don't use these. More importantly, understanding the difference between pure and impure functions helps you reason about the behavior of your code. And for your own sake, manage the side effects a little bit better. In functional programming, we try to minimize how often we use impure functions. And when we do have to use them, we try and isolate them. That is it for pure functions. It was a shorter episode. I hope you learned something today. And in the spirit of sticking with functional programming, ooh, where are we going next? I'm going to dedicate the next episode to another functional programming concept called first class functions. When I was learning JavaScript, people threw around the word first class functions, first class citizens all the time, and I had no idea what they meant. So tune in to episode 17, and uh, we'll talk about that in depth. All right, keep those comments coming. Uh, nice to see you again, and I will see you in the next one. And don't forget kids, stay hydrated. Counting buddies like sheep. Step away from the windows, away from the windows.